Hi, I'm Nina and this is Intrinsic where I share resources to help you teach more naturally. And today is going to be the first video of a series all about the iPad. In my last video, I showed our homeschool routine. And if you haven't seen that, you can check that out and I'll put it in the description. But a big part of our routine that I couldn't fit in there is using the iPad. And we actually use this so much and there's so many resources on this that I'm gonna to have to break this into several videos. So today, I'm gonna to show you how I have mine set up so that it is an optimal uh, educational resource to just leave out. You'll see that I have everything split into subjects. And the reason I do that is because we go through a charter school to help get reimbursed with funds. And that means we need to do reporting. And it has gotten easier, but when we first started, my daughter was the one that was required to do the reporting. And um, having things split into the subjects made it easier for her to recall the things that she had done in each of those segments. And it also helps her identify things in real life. She can recognize that she is learning naturally because those things relate to the things in, the sub in these subjects. So the first thing is Safari, and I have it set up so that she can only go to approved sites. Now, this isn't because I worry about her finding things that are not age appropriate. This is because if I'm leaving this out, I want everything on here to be stuff that keeps her mind engaged and not things that turn her into this passive state. I think that's kind of where the screen can take over. Before I show you what she has access to, I'll show you how you change that option. You go into settings and screen time, and then there's content privacy restrictions and content restrictions. Once you tap that, it's gonna ask for your password, and then you can go to web content, and right now you see the check that's allowed websites only, and then down below are all of the websites that I've put in. If there's something that I want to add to this, it's very easy for me to add. Um, I just make sure she doesn't watch me put my password in. You'll see in here that there's several websites that she can click on, almost like it's an app, but the two that she likes the most are Mystery Science and Generation Genius. Generation Genius is something that teaches you about science. There are three kinds that there are. Three to Wonder, which is for grades kindergarten to second grade, and there's a lab exam, which is for grades three to five, and there's a lab report recommended for grades six to eight. I've learned some things about atoms and molecules from the lab report, and from lab exam, I learned about extreme weather solutions. We can't stop extreme weather from happening, but we can reduce its impact. From three to under, I learned about the senses and and. Each kind have a DIY that you can do. There's a company called Mystery Science that I really like. There's an episode how they make a mystery science video. Sarah, who's in the company, does research and writing. And Amy and Kelly, they find all the visuals. And Doug, he does he does the voice things. One was, why are tornadoes so hard to predict? Let's compare it to hurricanes. Okay. They travel over water, so they can predict it like days or even weeks before they arrive. But tornadoes travel over land, so that's why it's hard to predict. I do not have YouTube on here. I have deleted that app. I do have the YouTube Kids app, and there definitely could be some improvements. And I wish that there was another app that was YouTube Education because YouTube Kids allows content that is made for kids and not necessarily educational. And I would love my child to be exposed to the regular SciShow and be able to add that to the iPad for her to freely look at, but not whatever else there is made for kids, but not necessarily going to keep her mind active. And it also is pretty tricky to find even things that are 
geared for kids. Not all of them are easy to find. Not all of them you can subscribe to the whole channel. You have to go and click each um, video individually, but we do use it. SciShow Kids is one that we can subscribe to, and another one that she loves is Chloe and the Nerb, which is all about the human body. YouTube Kids. It, it has lots of educational videos that I want, like Chloe and the Nerb and SciShow Kids. SciShow Kids is a YouTube channel that I really love. It's really educational, and I've been watching it a lot. It teaches you things like signs of being scared. When you're scared, you trigger the fight or flight response. And when, when we're scared, two main things can happen. Sometimes our brains will decide on the fight option, which means without even meaning to, we might suddenly feel angry and try to scare away whatever's scaring us. But other times, our brains will decide on the flight option. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Good guess, although it doesn't mean that we can fly. Flight is just another way to say running away. If our brains choose flight, we try to get away as fast as we can. Our first thing that we found that was a huge asset was brain pop. And like I said, we're connected to that charter and this is an, a resource that we get with that. I didn't realize it was gonna be such a great resource. My daughter really, really likes it. In the Brain Pop Junior, there's Annie and uh, Moby is the robot, and in the older ones, it's, I can't remember the boy's name, but there's a boy and the um, robot, and they just answer questions. So they're split into subjects, and then there's categories within there. I don't think I can show the video without copyright, so I will s just skip to the end and try and show you. Um, if you're wanting to chart, you can do quizzes, and there's always a funny joke, and I've really loved that. My daughter's kind of a linear thinker, and so having a joke in there, I think, helps her information become a little bit more relatable to everyone else. Now, if you are feeling like homeschooling without a curriculum, you are not going to be able to hit all of the things that they learn in public school. This is a great one because it is designed for public school. So if you don't love public school, that might be a negative. But I feel like I want my daughter to be exposed to uh, different opinions and be able to come up with her own. So a lot of times things that I don't totally agree with that it is preaching, it uh, is a teaching moment for us. And I would also <laughs> warn you that Brain Pop is for grades three and up, and so some of the content on there does include things like maturation. And if you're not ready for your child to have those things, you may want to stick to just Brain Pop Junior. Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior, they're really fun. Brain Pop is made for Grades three and up, and there's a character named Mo. There's a character named Moby in both of them. It's a fun thing with game, with games, projects, videos, mostly the videos. And Brain Pop Junior also has some belly up jokes. The next apps that I'm going to tell you about are Khan Academy and Khan Academy Kids. My daughter does not like Khan Academy very much. Most of it isn't very whimsical, and so it doesn't appeal to her. It's more like a standard lecture in a classroom. I keep it on there because since she can't search all of the internet, it is a place for her to search things. But Khan Academy Kids, she really, really loves. It is geared for a little bit younger. I wish they had something in between Khan Academy Kids and Khan Academy, um, maybe call it Khan Academy Elementary that was still whimsical but a little bit more content a little bit higher level reading there are some books in there some ebooks that she can read and she really does like the information that comes from those and i think this would be a great resource for someone who does have a little one who is learning to read it will highlight the words as it's reading along with it and so it could definitely save some time with multiple kids. Khan Academy Kids is really fun. I do recommend it. You can read books, you can watch videos, you can create things, and there are five 
five characters in it. Cody, Rhea, Sandy, Peck, and Olo. Rhea's my favorite. I don't want this video to go too long, and so I'm going to stop there and save the rest of the subjects for future videos. If you found this helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in those resources, they will be linked in the description and also in my spreadsheet that has all of the other apps in there that we use. So check that out and thanks for watching Intrinsic. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to Intrinsic because meaningful learning is driven by desire from within. What's up? Oh, okay. Um, do you want me to open the garage so you can fill it up in the sink? Okay, I'll lock that door and open up the other one. Oh, the words kind of sound the same too. Axle and axis. I bet they have the same root meeting. Root meeting? Yeah. Should I look that up? <laughs>